let me tell you the story about Django the cat. Around five years ago, after some prodding by my daughter Allison, I decided to adopt a cat. Django came to our home in December of 2019 as a 12 year old gray tabby rescue from the local Humane Society. After getting to know Django, I decided to make a YouTube video in August of 2020 about him and my other pets, past and present. This presentation picks up from that video about our lives together. Django and I were the perfect match. We matured around each other. He kept me company as a work-from-home employee during the COVID lockdown, and during my transition from Allstate to voiceover, he watched with love. Our time together was unparalleled. However, in the spring of 2023, I began noticing Django's loss of weight. Later in August, I learned from my vet that Django had chronic kidney disease, not uncommon for a 16-year-old feline. She prescribed medication for Django, but I knew his time was not that far into the future. I did, however, want to slow his decline. Initially, he showed improvement after taking the meds, gaining back some of his weight. Then, in January, he started declining faster. He began losing weight again. But oddly, he was still eating. Some. Unfortunately, during the weekend of January 27th, I noticed he had stopped eating altogether. Monday morning, I squeezed into a midday vet appointment. The labs revealed on Tuesday that his condition had worsened, and the doctor prescribed a higher daily dose of the old medicine and new meds to perk him up and stimulate his appetite, which I did give to him. But we were too far down the road, I was thinking. But I did want to give him a chance. He could barely walk around the house, lying down from place to place, flicking his tail. When I was able to feed him some, I knew it wouldn't sustain him. I was amazed that I had developed the courage to put my fingers in his mouth. He was, like most cats, a tidy animal. Yet I was mildly surprised that he never had an accident. Good boy, Django. On more than one occasion, I would see him hide behind the door in the downstairs bathroom. His time was coming to a close. On the morning of January 31st, I woke up and came downstairs to find that he was stretched out with labored breathing on the living room floor. I was elated, yet I was fearful of what was about to come. I picked him up and carried him into my bedroom. I guess you could say that I, I failed to let him hide and die. Something in me said, seize this opportunity to be with him when he drew his last breath. Be there when his plane lands and rolls to a stop. I gently placed him on a soft throw alongside of my bed, intermittently rubbing his face and side. After about 40 minutes of looking down at Django, then back at my phone, he had expired. It was at about 7.49 a.m. Lately, I've been thinking about all the things that his passing has caused. There are many gones from my life. Gone are. Seeing him uncurl himself from his bed upon my waking up from mine in the mornings and after my day naps. Gone. The early morning meds playtime that began when the vet initially recommended them. I would wrap them up in greenie balls, about the size of a marble, to camouflage the pill. Following me everywhere, upstairs and miraculously after almost four years together, downstairs, to the kitchen, the living room, my sound booth, even the toilet. Summer mosquito infestations in his water bowl, gone. The almost daily brushing of his coat. I would sit on my footlocker, click, click the comb, and away we would go. If I ever went more than a couple of days without doing it, I'd end up combing out enough hair to make a second cat. <laughs> gone are the cat fur tumbleweeds, blowing across the bedroom floor mainly and down the stairs. His patience with my gentle pulling of his tail or lifting him high in the air, that's gone. Seeing him wait for me at the top of the stairs when I came home. Additionally, his welcoming meows when I came up the stairs into our bedroom, gone. Our visits to the vet, the maneuvers I had to make to get him into the carrier. Under the bed, he would go in protest upon our return home. 
that same place he would dash to when I would accidentally step on his tail. But we always made up. Gone is taking hard stock paper, you know, advertising local real estate or politicians that clutter your mailbox. I'd fold them into little scoopers for tidying Django's cat box. On that same topic, also gone is the need to constantly secure all sorts of packaging, paper bags and large sturdy envelopes for the number two part of the scooping. Pulling the curtain back after a shower and seeing him like a sentry, waiting on shore for my return to dry land. Gone. Still with me, however, are the memories of all that's gone, and even more than I can list. I'll likely hear Django in wall and floor creaks in our home for the rest of my days. I'll look for him most every time I walk up the stairs. I already do. I'll look for him every time I yank my shower curtain back. I already do. I'll imagine it's Django every time I trip over my own feet. Or I'll see his face tucked into his cat bed before I close my eyes at night. He was the best, arguably my best friend. It's kind of funny. After he began coming downstairs with regularity, I was concerned that he might be having a last hurrah, a later life surge of energy before declining. I had forgotten and was eventually reminded of his disinterest in such pursuits by the fact that at 16 years old, scooting was not an issue. Granted, he would casually approach an open front door and then he would turn and walk away to the more predictable confines of the living room. He limited his newfound enthusiasm for the downstairs to expertly finding ways to get right up under my feet as I walked around the house. In the deepest caverns of my heart, I guess I always wanted a pet-cat relationship like the one I witnessed that my grandfather had with his Siamese cat, Jason. I finally had it. So, in looking back, that's exactly what it was. A last hurrah. And it was beautiful. Our final months together were an exclamation point on our symbiotic relationship. After he passed away, I had him cremated and scattered some of his earthly remains in my patio garden. I found much comfort from the handful of people who I've told about his passing. Cat owners, dog owners, some without pets at all, and even a random person on the street. I even crossed two lanes of traffic once to tell Joe at the dry cleaners, already a fellow former cat owner, about Django's passing. I didn't have any dry cleaning. It didn't matter. If I were to have one regret, that I never took him out to the field to watch me hit softballs. Unlike any pet I've ever had, or in this case, who arguably had me, I knew that our relationship was legendary. And I know in my wretched soul that from the very beginning to the peaceful end, I very much loved and appreciated Django. This is in memory of Django the Cat. Come here, Django. Django, come here. Hello. Come here. Come here. Ugh. Hey. How are you doing?